Good morning. Good morning. Rewind two weeks ago, and I was sitting outside on the deck, eating ice cream with my family and the Fergusons. We had just spent a few hours helping them unpack and move items around their new house. We took a break, and I was telling Arthur that when I got home, I needed to work on my sermon. When he asked me what I was writing it on, I proceeded to list topics that barely related to each other. It was then that I realized I needed to reconsider. I was unsure and feeling a bit unorganized. Arthur asked me what I wanted to write it about and what message I wanted to send. I told him I didn't know, but he pushed me and insisted that deep down I did know what I wanted to say. And while I didn't realize it then, he was right. In part, my difficulties stemmed from the fact that I am younger than many of the parishioners and feel like I have far less experience and wisdom to pass on. Now I do know what I want to tell you today. I want to let you know what St. Paul's has meant to me. For me, coming to church is about the relationships and the people who I have met over the years. The people who take us as we are and love and support us through thick and thin. Not only do I feel that I belong, but I feel that that belonging has transformed into a feeling of hope and confidence. A hope that has allowed me to weather the storm of being a teenager in high school and the confidence that has allowed me to take on leadership roles in the broader community. But it all comes back to the people who have provided the groundwork for me to discover that confidence and find that hope. At a time when it seems that the things that divide us are more important than the things that unite us, church serves as that sacred middle ground, that place we come to where we can see the beauty in each person for the gifts that they bring the world, despite the fact that we may not always agree. No matter the week I have had, one thing I can always count on come Sunday morning is a big hug from Jan Gurley. Whether it is as soon as I walk in the door or right before I leave, she somehow manages to make sure we know how much she loves us. One of my favorite memories with Jan is the times when my mom, Leo, and I went shopping with her, Jan Blake, and Ginny Draper for the food for the community table at Costco. The highlight of this trip was most definitely the free samples that seemed to appear in every aisle. <laughs> Not only did the trip provide fun for me and Leo, it also provided a good example of the importance of giving back to the community, something that is a very important aspect of belonging to St. Paul's. There are so many people who I can count on at church to be there for me and help me. Some are older than me, like Jan, and others are peers I see nearly every day. I am very involved with best buddies at the high school and was planning the high school's chapter trip to the annual prom, hosted at a local hotel. This is a huge deal for the students who go and we look forward to this event every year. Unexpectedly, I was in a pinch and needed more help than I had anticipated. I was explaining to some of my classmates how I was really worried about not having found that help. It was then without hesitation, that Amy Martin offered to come with me and help out for the night. Similarly, when I needed an extra volunteer for Special Olympics at Lexington High School, Emmy McSwain immediately offered that she would come help. Emmy and Amy are members of the St. Paul's community, and they are both two people who inspire me to be a better person. They volunteered to help me when I was in a moment where there was little else I could do than pray it would all work out. Had it not been for the community here, it's hard to say if Emmy, Amy, and I would have formed such close friendships. Another very recent example of how I have experienced the community of St. Paul's was in class last week. Emmy and I were sitting together, and I was telling her how I was happy that I had been exercising more consistently, mostly through early morning walks with my mom. Emmy mentioned how she thought that was awesome. The next day, we walked together, three miles of walking and talking on a beautiful spring morning. Something that I have learned is that planning intentional interaction is helpful. I see many of my friends in class, but it's the time outside of class that brings me the most joy. The simple times where you lace up your sneakers or grab some snacks and a picnic blanket and just be. Since we had late entry that day, we were even able to go grab breakfast at Whole Foods. As I was standing at the scone case, I heard someone come up behind me and say, Hi, Helen. It was Chris Wendell. <laughs> what were the odds? Despite his invitation to attend morning prayer and the fact that we had <laughs> and the fact that we had to decline so we weren't marked tardy, this 
is community, and this is why I do church. <laughs> that sense of community experienced through these simple interactions is the kind of support that keeps me going. Everyone here provides their own offering to the community and inspires me in a different way and for a different reason. The hope of the people around me in this community is contagious. There are people here who have fought battles and are fighting battles now. But the hope of the people who have stayed strong despite the challenges they have faced are an example to me of what dignity and hope look like. It is through certain people that I have learned about the importance of faith and prayer. It is people like Lisa Hafer. I remember being little and going on a girl's day with Lisa because she doesn't have any daughters. I can still vividly remember standing at the candy counter at the old Candy Castle in Lexington Center and making my first ever purchase of sour Lego candies. <laughs> Fast forward about 10 years and I was given the shocking news that Lisa had been diagnosed with cancer. Lisa is someone who I have been very connected to since childhood. Lisa's unbreakable spirit and drive to beat cancer aided her recovery. The zest for life that radiates from her is still here. Community, something that I felt a part of as I processed Lisa's diagnosis of cancer. Different communities in Lisa's life came together to make a healing garden in her yard. I remember spreading mulch with people, some of whom go to church here. When the garden was ready to be blessed by Chris, there was a ceremony in the yard. I remember the phone call with my mom when she told me that my family had gone to the ceremony. I was bummed that I had missed out on something I felt I needed to be at. I was lying on an air mattress in the gym of the church center in Nicholas County, West Virginia for my first trip to Appalachia. Despite my feeling of disappointment for missing the event, the St. Paul's community came racing back in to raise me up in, what the, middle, in the middle of what was a difficult week. ASP, fast forward one year from that week, I was having one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. I had come back for a second go round of something that, well, that proved to be extremely rewarding, despite being initially anxiety producing and sad. There was so much need that it never seemed anything we did was going to make a difference. But for me, there was something about Bland County. There was something special in the air. The togetherness of the crews and the care of the people, there it was again, community. Every day there was a reminder that we do not walk or serve alone. There was the night we went to McDonald's and Matt Skavinsky drove the van through the drive through and bought 17 hot fudge sundaes for us, <laughs> all of which were eaten. We were thrilled to sit together and enjoy the simple pleasure of McDonald's ice cream. ASP is loaded with small interactions of great gratitude. Wednesday afternoon rolled around and I noticed that Emma's crew was a little later returning to camp than we were. When we were all back in the dining hall, John McPhee, told me that he had gotten me something at a thrift store. To be honest, I had no idea what to expect. <laughs> a few moments later, he returned with a giant tumbler cup plastered with NASCAR drivers, specifically one of my past favorites, Danica Patrick. Some of you may be confused that I like NASCAR. Yeah, I do, but that's not the point. Thinking about it after he gave me the cup, I realized how much he had listened to me, not just heard, but listened. I was touched by this gesture and I still use the cup two years later. <laughs> And then the next night, our last night in the vans as we drove through Hershey, Pennsylvania, and our Wendy's, the entire van listened to the NASCAR race on the radio. Because that's what community is, humoring each other because you care about them even when you have differences. But to be completely honest, I would not have had any of these memories at ASP without the support of Emily Mitchell. Over the years, Emily has been uber organized and a great support to all high schoolers in the parish. Even when she tried to step down, we pulled her back. <laughs> Emily's commitment to ASP and doing good in the world has trickled down to the youth in the parish and it is a gift to have been impacted by it. Without Emily's ability to make necessary things enjoyable, our group would not have grown. This year, we are at an all-time high for participation with ASP. Another gift I have received from Emily is the confidence to be a leader. Emily is someone who has always believed in me and allowed me to do work, knowing that it will be done, maybe in a slightly different way than she would have done it, but done. I am honored to be Emily's co-leader for this summer's trip to Appalachia. The foundation that has been instilled in me by Emily and the other youth leaders from the church has spurred me to become a leader in the greater community. In the past few years, I have become much more aware of the world around me, and I have started standing up for what I believe in. 
I feel that the Episcopal Church has promoted community as it relates to taking a stand on issues that we, as followers of Jesus, believe are important. One of my favorite memories of life, not just church, was attending the Women's March in Boston in 2017. The Episcopal Cathedral on the Common opened its doors to us. That is where I gathered with my mom, sister, and a large group of St. Paul's parishioners we were, where we were led in prayer before our march began. I remember being with so many strong people that day. In the crowd of pink hats, there it was again, community. There are so many other people here who have had a huge impact on my life. I could go on for a few hours more, but my mom told me that any good sermon loses attention after seven minutes. <laughs> And according to the clock, I'm already three minutes over. <laughs> but seriously, there are so many other people here, both young and old, who have helped to shape and form me. Tupac once said, I am a reflection of the community, and I believe this. The love and support of this community is one of my life's greatest blessings. Thank you.